Now, Rishi Sunak splashed the cash today as he unveiled his mini budget in a bid to tackle the crippling cost of living crisis. He raised the national insurance threshold by £3,000 and slashed 5p off fuel duty. But the rabbit out of the hat was finally an actual Tory income tax cut. A clear goal for Conservative chancellors and even some Labour ones has been to cut income tax. It would clearly be irresponsible to meet this ambition this year. And yet, I refuse to let that ambition wither and drift. I can confirm, before the end of this Parliament, in 2024, for the first time in 16 years, the basic rate of income tax will be cut from 20 to 19 pence in the pound. But while he may boast of cutting taxes, let's not forget the supposedly Thatcherite Chancellor has led Brits to the highest tax burden in 70 years. Well, my next guest was the last Tory Chancellor to dare to cut the income tax rate back in uh, 1996, 25 years ago. Lord Ken Clark joins me now. And uh, Ken, you cut it a bit more than 1p, right? Uh, Yeah, but I raised other taxes as well because that was getting us out of a recession and to growth with low inflation. Uh, But, yeah, I set a target of 20p for basic rate of income tax. Uh, I think it's very reckless to commit yourself to an income tax cut two years ahead. We've no idea. I've never known such uncertainty in the outlook in this economic crisis. So you don't think you should have, you don't think Rishi should have made that? I don't think he should have done it. It was just announced, you know, two years in advance at the end to get a good rousing ending and get the order papers waived. Uh, it means you cut out any other tax changes, tax cuts. You know, maybe spending he won't be able to embark on because you now have to deliver this penny. And there's nothing wrong with a 20 pence rate of income tax. It was not the highest priority except for publicity reasons. So, and I was quite, quite, I thought that was a quite reckless thing to do to announce that just to be able to end with a flourish because he won't succeed in getting a good press. Uh, no, what he had to do. No, because when you look at the facts, even though Rishi wants this to look like a tax cutting statement today, the reality is, as I just said, the tax burden is higher than it's been for 70 yeah, years. And, and I, you see, I defend him for that. It has to be the high. We have to be uh, raised taxes when he did, and he's raised taxes uh, more because than of COVID. Just, uh, well, we've been hit by three things: a hard Brexit, COVID. And now the, the Russian sanctions because of Ukraine. Uh, the last two aren't even the government's fault, uh, particularly. Uh, and uh, he quite rightly spent huge amounts of money on the furlough scheme, mm-hmm. which rescued the economy from total collapse at the time of lockdown. And he's had to spend huge amounts of money on the NHS and on eventually on social care uh, because of COVID. But did he have to spend all that money? Wasn't... The furlough scheme by the end actually quite reckless. It was always inevitable that we were going to end up in this financial hellscape. No, I I think if we hadn't we hadn't had the furlough scheme, uh, the economy would have hit the buffers in a big way, Uh, and I I think it would have been deeper. uh, The the, the recession we had, and it would be longer to come out of it. Uh, A furlough scheme was the most successful thing, in my opinion, that Rishi has done. But he shouldn't, as you're quite right, he should be frank with the public. Mm. These are hard times. Living standards for most of us are going to fall in in a way they haven't for about 50 years. Uh, And and he he must, above all, make sure the present crisis doesn't turn into a recession uh, and doesn't turn into stagflation. And how does he do that? By continuing to run the economy prudently... Uh, and by continuing to do what he can to stimulate growth with lower inflation, the Bank of England's finally getting its finger out and doing what it can, uh, and also to boost productivity and skills training. One of the best things in the whole statement, n- nobody will notice, it won't be mentioned in the papers in the morning, was he's deciding to do something about skills training and vocational training and accepts that the apprenticeship levy hasn't worked. Mm. Now, that seems like an irrelevance, even when I raise it now. In fact, until we get a healthy economy with rising productivity and more vocational training in this country, 
we will be in trouble. So meanwhile, so just trying to present all these things as kind of giveaways and a tax-cutting statement of things when it, it wasn't really, uh, you mm. know, is, is missing the point. It, these are Yeah, I think he got, he, he got the tone wrong. It was celebratory today. Uh, the Tory backbench has loved it. But in fact, I think it could backfire on him, especially given, by the way, this is a man we know with major political ambitions. He also is, a, is actually, amongst the ministers, one of the more serious, one of the more sensible... He does take a medium long-term interest. He isn't usually obsessed with tomorrow's newspapers. And he must realise his main job, and he must tell his prime minister, that the main thing he can do for the prime minister is to avoid, as I've already said, a recession before the next election. And mm. you should spell out to people that these are grave times. And he, he, you could not have spent all the money he had to mm. spend uh, when, when the lockdown came, when the economy collapsed, and that, that, that uh, without our having to pay for it what, to a certain extent. What, what do you make of the reports of tension at the moment between Number 10 and Number 11? There are always tensions between Number 10 and Number 11. There can't be a Prime Minister who hasn't got irritated with his Chancellor from time to time. Prime Ministers have to be intensely political and they're trying to keep the popularity of their government going. The, the job of the Chancellor is to be the responsible one who explains we can't do mm. that. And the long, t you know, the medium term like national interest means that we have to keep debt under control, we have to be able to service it. Uh, I mean, I, you know, John Major and I remain great friends. We never really fell out. Uh, but I knew that what I had to give, what I, what I delivered, I'm glad to say, it was growth you had to low give in check inflation. Sometimes. And the little populist things, uh, I, I was responsible for interest rates in those days. It, you know, I did have to put up interest rates at times, which used to absolutely send the Prime Minister into despair. But, but yes. if you have the, your job as Chancellor is to take the fact you have to do tough unpopular things and do mm. your best to explain them and Rishi is normally good at that and the, the the balance as a whole remained responsible he's he's got he's had a lot of tax increases his his revenues are higher than he expected because inflation is giving him more tax he spent some of it in trying to ease the burden for the public he should have concentrated more on the less well on public but he kept some of it back in order to keep debt coming down back to a level we can afford because higher interest rates are going to make the cost of servicing that debt quite enormous. He's got to keep the debt under control. So overall, actually, he was more responsible than we're making him sound. But the, the way he presented he, he should have been more candid than he presented it and made it clear this was a national crisis in which he was I agree with that. Line. Uh, finally, I just want to ask you about the raw politics of Rishi's position, because you know how difficult it is for a Chancellor to move in to the top job, which is something that Rishi certainly wants to do. Do you think, given what he's facing, given this unprecedented cost of living crisis over the next two years, that there's any chance that Rishi Sunak becomes the next Prime Minister? I think there is a chance, yes. But without repeating myself... He won't get there just by doing short-term populist things. In fact, he might get credit with hindsight if the tough, difficult decisions are seen to work and save us from disaster. He is one of those ministers, and it's not every minister in this government, who takes the job seriously. He's up to the job, he's competent, he's responsible. Stop throwing in the end promises of tax, uh, income tax cuts in two years' time, just think you'll, because you think it'll make the whole statement and make you more popular. Chance, he'll be leader if he retains the ability to look as though he's actually competent to govern and the results he delivers are right. Stop bothering about the ups and downs and the your personal standings in the polls from day to day. Very good advice from a former Chancellor, Lord Ken Clark. A pleasure to have you here. Ken, thank you so much.